Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're talking about is connecting to databases using JDBC from Azure Logic App Standard. Let's go. All right, so in terms of why this episode is important, connectivity to JDBC data sources has been a challenge in the past when connecting from Azure Logic Apps. This is in part due to the specific use of JDBC libraries. Typically for various database providers, they will have some sort of jar file that you need to go ahead and include in your application in order to call that. With so many different flavors and not having an ability for customers to upload their own jar files, this became a challenge for us. And certainly when you think about multi-tenant architectures, this is an even bigger challenge. But with Logic App Standard being single tenant and with having isolated storage and compute, we can take advantage of this architecture to allow customers to therefore go ahead and upload these JDBC libraries. Now, so as I've kind of alluded to, like this is only available in standard, it's not available in consumption, and as a result, it would not be available in Power Automate as well. So you're gonna see some similarities between what I showed you a couple weeks ago with the XSLT plus .NET framework functionality here and we're gonna use a similar approach to upload jar files to Logic App Standard. All right, well, let's go ahead, let's dive deeper into the content. So for my example today, I'm gonna to use SQL Server, uh, which may not be the most intuitive example because we do have a, a native SQL Server connector that we can use, but um, in the absence of having a JDBC compliant data store, uh, I'm using SQL Server. And so really this process, the steps will be largely the same regardless of what flavor of database that you're using that you wanna connect with over JDBC. So I'll include this link inside of the video description. And the file that I went ahead and downloaded was this zip file here. And then as part of that zip file, you're gonna see there was uh, four different jars that are available. And those represent different versions of the Java runtime that you wanna use. This is the, the jar that I, that I used for this particular example. Now, if you saw my previous video, and I'll include it in the description, it was the XSLT plus .NET framework video where I talked about using Kudo as a way to create a folder structure and then subsequently being able to upload .NET assemblies. We need to use a similar process um, this time around, except the path is gonna be different. We're going to create a folder, and this folder is gonna be at the same level as the artifacts folder, and it's gonna be called lib, and then within lib, we're gonna have built-in operation SDKs, and then within that folder, we're gonna have a folder called jar. And so that's where I've gone ahead and created it. You can see it here, www root lib built-in operation SDKs, and then jar. You can then go ahead, just drag and drop this jar file onto the surface and you'll have the file set up. Now, if you're doing this through VS Code, you would, and I do show this in that .NET plus XSLT video, you can go ahead and create these folders directly in your project itself and then go ahead and deploy and this file will go as part of that deployment itself. So either one will work for you. And I'll show you briefly a kudo when we get to the demo itself. Now, in order to enable this, and once again, this is much like the .NET Framework plus XSLT video I talked about, is we do need to enable a feature flag, at least for now. Um, this is something that will be baked in automatically in the future, sometime in 2023, but for now we do have to add it manually. So inside of our app config, create a app setting called Azure Web Jobs Feature Flags, and then we've got a value of Enable Multi-Language Worker. I believe you can have more than one of these feature flags if you're use, doing using a feature flag for something else. I think you can separate it through commas, and that's also covered in that other video that I was discussing. Now, another thing you're gonna run into is connection strings. What does that exactly look like? What I decided to do was to, um, well not cheat, but I decided to sort of be smart about this. Uh, I have a database already in Azure, it's a SQL server, as I talked about, Azure SQL database. And if you go to the overview page for that SQL database, you'll see this connection strings link. You can go ahead and click on it. And when you do so, you're gonna see essentially the conventions for all of these various approaches. So we're using JDBC. So you click on that tab and then you'll see the connection string for JDBC. I was then able to go ahead and copy it 
and then go ahead and create a connection. So that's the best way to do this without having to do a whole lot of guessing. So with all of that said, let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo and see this in action. Okay, so first up is app settings. If we go down, we should be able to see Azure Web Jobs feature flags. We can go ahead and click on that. And we've got a value of enable multi-language worker. So that's something that you want to set up in your configuration. So that's quite important. Then when we talk about the jar file itself, we want to go to development tools, advanced tools, then click on go. And this will bring up the kudo tool. So then we can click on debug console CMD. And then we're going to see our folders that exist inside of our application. You can either go ahead and navigate through the command prompt or through this visual editor. And when we go down here, we should find our lib folder, built-in operation SDKs, jar, and then sure enough, there is our jar file. So those are some of those prereq steps that I talked about before. Now we can go ahead and get into a workflow. So here is my workflow. If I wanna go ahead and find this specific action, it will be built in. So if we go to the built-in tab and then, well, we can either type or just look for it. We've got JDBC. We can then go ahead and add it. We've got three different actions that we can go ahead and use. Execute query, which is the one that I'm using. We've also got get schema and get tables itself. So if we go ahead and click on this, then we have the ability to go ahead and establish a query. Now, when we talk about the connections, this was that experience I talked to you before about. So provide a name, provide that URL, go in, save yourself the headache, grab the connection string from the Azure SQL database and then username and password itself. So let's just get rid of this. Now, the example that I'm gonna use is actually from an existing interface. If you saw the video, that uh, I created about like VNet connectivity. I'm using that same SQL database that is only exposed through a VNet, through a private endpoint. And so this still does work and it should because this is part of Logic App standard and the fact that I've enabled outbound connectivity, even though it's JDBC, it's still gonna use that VNet connection in order to go ahead and connect to that database. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and, and provide a query around selecting all rows where discount code is equal to integrate 2022. And then I'll just go ahead and output the results uh, from that specific query itself. So let's go ahead and let's go and run this. Okay, we'll just go ahead and run the trigger. That was just a scheduled recurrence trigger. So it'll just take a few seconds to go ahead and run. And we can see that it was successful. Let's go ahead and check out run history. Sure enough, we can see the value returned. It is a result set, however, we just have one record. And we can go ahead and write that out uh, to compose. Now, we could obviously apply a schema to this using parse JSON if we wanted to, but uh, for this video, I think that's, that's far enough. So that's an example of how you can go ahead and use the new JDBC built-in action inside of Logic App Standard. All right, so that concludes another video on the channel. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. You're obviously on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comments, always welcome. Thanks again for checking out this video, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.